Hi everybody and welcome to my video. I'm Rebecca Jarman and today I'm going to teach you how to paint this Christmas wreath. It says it's the most wonderful time of the year and it's a really lovely one to paint for Christmas as a Christmas card. I also wanted to just quickly show you um, the different watercolour paintings that I have at the moment on my channel which are specifically for beginners and they're all Christmas themed and they were really lovely to paint. So um, I have this other Christmas tree tutorial and I don't know if you can see there but I've used a special medium on the top of the Christmas trees to make it sparkle and shine so that was really fun. I also show you how to use the masking fluid to create these patterns on the trees as well so that was a really good tutorial to look out for. Another video that I have for you, if you enjoy painting flowers then this one's for you. Um, there are three pretty poinsettia flowers in this painting and we do a bit of splatter and a few other techniques on there as well so look out for that one. I also have a robin tutorial for those of you that are bird lovers and this is perfect for Christmas. That was a nice one to paint. I also have a video coming out shortly, I've just finished recording it and it's a really fun one for everybody to do and you can see there's this really cute little car with a Christmas tree on top and I teach you how to do this lovely salt technique as well to create the effect of snow falling in the background. So look out for all those, I'm going to create a playlist for you. Uh, remember, specifically for beginners, but they're also really fun, quick paintings for people that are more experienced too. So I'll hope you have a look at those, check them out. Um, I'll put a link below this video to the playlist and make that really easy for you. Now, let's get started. Hello everyone and welcome to my video. I'm just going to quickly take you through the materials that you're going to need for today's class. Firstly, I want to point out that I have created a PDF for you with the drawing, the lettering on, so you can download that. You'll find it in the description below this video. Click the link, um, download it and print it off. Then you can trace through from that. Um, to create the circle, if you want to um, do it freehand or whatever yourself, you don't need to download my PDF, um, it's absolutely fine. I used my masking tape to draw around. I've drawn an inner circle to give me a guide as to how much space I have to create the lettering. And then the outer circle of the tape for, if you like, a centre line, a guide as to where I'm going to put my foliage to follow that lovely curve without having too much difficulty. So you can see here I've already drawn my image on my watercolour paper. I always use £140 or 300 gram paper at least. I recommend that you do the same. Um, it's, you get a much better finish from your work if you use better quality watercolour paper. So I can't stress that enough. Always stick your watercolour paper down to something. I just have a piece of stiff card here. Um, it's actually mount board. Stick it down with some masking tape and then everything is kept nice and still while you're painting and you'll find that you won't get so much buckling once you start adding a lot of water to the paper. Uh, the paints that we are using today are green gold, sap green, burnt sienna and a little alizar in crimson as well. Um, if you don't have these greens in, or any of the colours in your palette, just feel free to use and substitute what you have already got. You can also mix your greens if you want to, that would be super. You will need a mixing palette, obviously paints, which we've just gone through. Today I'm using a number two and number four round brush. Uh, you'll need a HB pencil to draw your image down to the paper. I ha always have two pots of water, you can't see them on camera, um, but I have one pot of water to clean off my brush and then a second pot of water that always stays clean that I use for mixing my paint so we don't get any muddy colours there. Grab yourself a piece of paper towel just to clean your brush and you will also need some form of pen um, to complete your picture. 
I've used, I've actually used a non-permanent ink pen here, so I need to be super careful when I paint my foliage um, that I don't get any water on the ink because it will run. Um, if you use a permanent pen, then that will be great. That would be absolutely fine. You won't have to worry too much about it then. Okay, so let's get started. As you can see on my palette, I've already got my greens mixed and ready to go. Just off the side here, I have a little bit of the Burnt Sienna. Um, and we're also going to be using Alizarin Crimson as well to add a few berry details in there. So, I already have mine drawn down on my watercolour paper. But what I will do to begin with, now you can clearly see that on camera, I'm just going to lighten those lines because I don't want to be able to see it once I've finished my painting. I just want to use it as a rough guide um, as I'm going along. So I'm also going to rub out the interior line as well. So I don't really want to go anywhere near that internal line. If I do, I'm going to spoil the text that I've already created there. So I'm just using a putty rubber to erase that, <clears throat> excuse me, to erase that pencil line, which is a pretty good thing to have. It doesn't tend to scuff the paper or anything like that. So I'd recommend a putty rubber. Um, <clears throat> okay, folks, so once you've got it all down and you're ready to go, I am going to start off by um, using my paler green, which for me is the sap green. Oh, sorry, <laughs> apologies. It's the green gold. So um, the idea of this is to layer up the foliage. So we're going to start off with the lighter colours and then gradually get darker um, to create a sort of layered effect and hopefully a fuller kind of wreath. So to begin with, I'm going to take the green gold and pop some of that on my brush. This is my number four brush, so slightly larger, but about the right size that I want for these marks. Now I'm going to show you how, if I just take my sample sheet here, a great way to create foliage is to start by drawing a central line and then um, using the tip of your brush you want to create little leaves so dragging down with the tip then pressing down so the barrel the, the main part of the brush is much fatter and then gradually lifting off again until the tip is just touching the paper it gives you a nice leaf mark so the tip of the brush then the belly of the brush nice and fat dragging it towards you and lifting off again so you can practice that um, a little bit if you're not confident so just raising the brush brush again to get that lovely tip at the end um, so that is what I'm going to start with first of all okay so let's start off at the bottom now the outer line is actually effectively my central line if you like so the foliage is going to come either side of that central circle so if i start off by placing a rough line like that and then creating some leaf shapes using that technique so first of all less pressure then pressing down on the brush and then lifting it off okay just to fill those ones out a little bit i didn't press down quite as much on those so i want a little bit of a a little bit of symmetry obviously we're drawing we're painting um foliage so it's nature <clears throat> so it doesn't matter if it's not perfect it's quite all right um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a few on the left on the right here and then a few on the left and try and go for a sort of balance so this one I'm going to have coming more up towards the center And 
and then the next one along I'm going to go slightly further out to the edge Now I'm going to do a few on the left hand side of the painting. Just dragging the brush towards my towards the centre line that I draw first with the brush. added a little bit more water to my paint there. I'm working on dry paper so it's drying really quickly. You can vary the size of the leaves. So you want a little bit of variety really. So as you can see, it's slightly symmetrical, but there are differences there. don't want this to be perfect, it's nature that we're trying to emulate. Um, and we're going for a sort of full effect. Uh, let's have another one up here now. And as I go towards the top, I want to make them a little bit smaller. So you could change your brush if you want to, to create smaller leaves and foliage. Or you can just use less pressure. Just do a few more of these, maybe add a little bit more water, make it slightly lighter. Okay, so that's the first layer done and what's quite important here guys is to make sure this is entirely dry before you move on to the next layer. So I'm just cleaning off my brush and always wipe it on your piece of paper towel just to make sure that there's no paint remaining on there. And then I'm going to go into my darker green. So for me, that's the sap green here that I've mixed ready mixed and this is going to create a nice contrast if I show you the sample so the green gold is what I've just used I'm going on to sap green now which you can see is a lot darker I'm going to start off by adding a bit more water to it to begin with so that it's a little a little paler and let's see so let's do a few more like this uh, maybe one pointing up here and what we want to do here is overlap this is why it's important that the previous layer is dry because I'm I want a sort of a full effect so by overlapping what we've got already we should create a nice full um, wreath effect I'm gonna have one coming down this way 
And that's why we've started off with the paler colours, because these darker colours will lay nicely over the top. I'm using the same simple technique of dragging the paint from the centre line that I draw first um, to the tips of the foliage. Let's have a little one. Um, let's go up this way. And you can see already that this layering is working nicely. I'm just going to continue in this way. I'm going to speed up the video for you folks so it doesn't begin to get too long. Um, but you'll still be able to see what I'm doing. Okay, so I've got in the two different colours of green there and you might have noticed that as these darker green um, leaves were still slightly damp, I added a touch of the green straight from my palette here so it was a thicker consistency just to add in some um, depth of colour really, just uh, to give it some difference, a variety of green across the leaf if you like. Um, just to make it look a little bit more interesting and add a few shadows in there. So the next thing I want to do, you can see actually, uh, just to mention again, I've left a nice space around the outside of my letters. I don't want it to get too cramped in the middle here around, it's the most wonderful time of the year, we want to make sure that we can all read that clearly, so therefore I've left enough space there. But what we're going to do now, I'm going to turn my palette round for you and um, just show you this is the brown that I'm going to be using, which is the Burnt Sienna. Um, I'm just going to mix up a little more of that, so a little bit of water and a little bit of paint from my palette, mix that in. Okay, so that's, that's fine. Um, this time I'm going to switch brushes and use my number two. And we're going to do some some twigs to make it look um, nice and wintry. So just here and there really now the twigs um, I'm going to do a sort of a line and then some branches coming off here and there. just to give something extra, a little bit of variety in marks really. Um, and of course we can add little berries to these as well, which will be nice. Uh, let's have another one coming down that way I think. Now I'm using the very tip of my brush, <clears throat> for those of you that don't know, if you apply a very small amount of pressure on the tip you can get a nice fine line um, and if you press hard you get a wider line. So we're controlling the width of the line with the amount of pressure you put on the brush. So again you can practice this, um, it can take a little time to get used to to doing that and sometimes you don't want to do full lines either um, it can look really good if you don't join the lines if you leave some gaps um, so a broken line effectively 
and I'm going to bring another one in up here. Um, let's see. So stop and think, see what you've got. Obviously your painting's not going to be exactly the same as mine, so you'll have gaps in different areas to what I do. Um, so just take stock, maybe um, have a little break. A good tip here is in actual fact to stand back from your painting um, and that way you get a really good idea of, of gaps and, and things like that. So it will stand out much better to you. It will be much more obvious if you do that um, than, than when you're sitting on top of your work. Um, it can be quite difficult to make those decisions. So just allow yourself a little bit of space. <clears throat> And just work things out in your own time. I'm trying to work quite quickly for you guys. I don't want, like I say, I don't want this to take too long. Um, so I want the branches mainly to be on the base. I think possibly let's bring one down through here, I think. Um, and that's working quite nicely. Okay, so just a very small amount of work there. Again, clean off my brush. Just clean off the previous brush. A tip here, guys, is don't leave your brushes in your water pots because they have very fine points. And if you sit them in water and have them standing on their end like this, you will damage the bristles at the end. So we know that, you know, watercolor painting brushes or any brushes, you know, you, you don't want to be spoiling them. Um, they can cost quite a lot of money and the last thing you want to do is leave them in water and damage those tips. So good good hint there for you. Um, you know, don't leave them in in your water. It's quite simple. Um, <clears throat> best thing to do is clean it off and lay it down flat on your table to dry. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is use the alizarin crimson, which is here in my palette. And I'm going to add a few little berries. So I'm just wetting the tips of my brush and I'm coming in to the paint in my palette. And when I paint a berry, let's go back to a demonstration here. When I paint a berry, I do need to have it flat though. I don't want it to be perfectly round and you're very rarely going to get a perfect circle anyway. But a good way to start is draw the outside and then I like to leave an area of white just as like a little reflection on the berry and actually if you get a variety of shapes for your berries they are going to be much more <coughs> excuse me much more realistic so don't be too perfect with your berries um, if you need to take a little pencil and maybe um, put a little mark where you want them possibly if you're finding it difficult to decide or you're a little bit worried about going straight in with a paintbrush just put little marks here and there just indications of where you might want your berries i'm going to start here on the right hand side and i'm going to do um, a small circle and remembering to leave a little bit of white. Small circle, and remembering to leave a little spot of white. So these are really, really tiny berries. Um, you can decide how big you want your berries on your painting. Um, incidentally, you can scale up my PDF. If you want to do a larger painting, then um, you can enlarge it on your computer and, and do it that way, then you can you know your berries will be a bit bigger that way they won't have to be so tiny but um, I'm just going to pop a couple in there let's see let's have one or two over here you're going to use a very small amount of paint here so don't go to town and if you're using <laughs> A tube of paint don't don't squeeze a lot of crimson out on your palette you really won't need that much 
that's why I like using these solid palettes. I mean, I've these are actually um, decanted from tubes. I squeeze them into my palette and I let them go hard. But it means I can dictate how much paint I use and it's very easy to access those. Just a little bit of water activates them. And um, it's a very easy way of, of working, I find. I'm trying to get the whites of the berries, the little white highlight to be in a very similar position so um, the light is shining from one direction on the painting. Okay, so again I'm going to speed the video up for you guys now. Okay, so I have added my berries and um, it's all looking good. I'm going to allow it all to dry now and give it a final going over with my putty rubber to make sure that there aren't any pencil marks showing. So join me again and we'll review the painting in a second. Welcome back folks. I have allowed this to fully dry and I've then taken my putty rubber and I've completely rubbed as hard as I can to erase any of the pencil marks. Unfortunately, because I drew it fairly darkly for you guys to see on camera, um, there are a couple of marks that are still remaining. So my tip for you guys is to really um, draw the image, draw the text and everything else as lightly as you can do with your pencil. And then obviously you want to take whatever felt pen or biro that you're going to use and trace over those letters, then thoroughly rub out your pencil marks. Um, that way if you draw your pencil marks quite lightly you shouldn't have any issues removing them. At this stage in the video, can I just say thank you guys for supporting my channel, I really do appreciate it. And if you have learned something from my video today and would like to see more of my uh, tutorials, my watercolour classes, they're all entirely free, then if you press subscribe um, and press the bell icon as well, uh, which you'll see um, down the bottom there, you will receive notifications every time I upload a new watercolour class. That would be great. It would really support me and help me to grow my channel, guys. I'd really appreciate that. So we have created this beautiful wreath painting today, which would make a perfect gift, a Christmas card. It would look fantastic for that special person in your life. We've used two different greens and we've painted berries on twigs as well. And I think it looks super. So I've hoped you've enjoyed my class today, folks. Take care, um, I wish you all the best, and I'll see you again soon with another free painting tutorial. Bye.